Hello, I'm Nick Thorne from thenosygenealogist.com. I'd like to talk to you today about how to get back before 1837 with your family tree research in England and Wales. Fact, almost all people researching their ancestors in England and Wales will hit the getting back before 1837 brick wall. If you're struggling to track down your ancestors before census records and civil registration began, then this CD is going to be a gold mine of information for you. I spent a lot of time reading the family history magazines, online forums and blogs, and the question that I often and regularly see coming up is how to overcome the difficulties associated with anything before 1837. Simply learning how to use these resources will vastly improve your research and help you overcome these difficulties. Armed with only a better understanding of the key records pre-1837, it's possible for you to go and find your forebears and break through the brick walls that you may have encountered in researching your family tree so far. There are simply millions of us who now have the family tree researching bug. We're curious about where we came from and what our ancestors did. We wonder if their characteristics have been passed down to us in our genes. It is true that never before has it been so easy for the average person with just a home connection to the internet to do some delving and find out who their great-grandparents were. It usually doesn't take us more than a search of the census collections online to find that out. We can easily go to other websites, press a few buttons and find our ancestors' births, marriages and deaths without having to leave our home if we don't want to. We don't need to make visits to record offices, the National Archives, family history centres or the dusty corners of city libraries to do any of this simple research, so we begin to think that everything is online. What is really frustrating is when the records seem to run out. I'm talking here about 1837, the year when you stop being able to find your ancestors fairly easily in the state-run censuses or the birth, marriage and death indexes in England and Wales. These are the kind of records that have made it online, but pre-1837 we have one heck of a job to find much at all in the way of family history data on the internet. Yet it needn't be the end of the line for your research when you hit this barrier. All you need is some good old-fashioned normal common sense a willingness to start and apply the techniques in this tutorial and you can be off and running again. Your friends and family will be blown away with the extra generations of ancestors you may unearth after listening to this audio CD. The ancestry research boom is phenomenal. If you don't believe me then just look at the viewing figures the BBC got for Who Do You Think You Are in the last series. A mind-blowing 6.5 million viewers of tuned in to see the show and it's as much as a cool two million more than the average for this program slot. So take it from me our hobby is popular, very popular indeed. There's little doubt that we in the 21st century are pretty fascinated by family research. Some of us nurture hopes of being related to the rich and famous while others of us hope to hear about a family scandal, or perhaps we're longing to find that skeleton lurking in our ancestral cupboards who's just waiting to fall out into our hands. Once we take our investigation back in time and come up against the lack of state records, then we're suddenly faced with a problem. It's the need to consider a much wider variety of documents in order to find our family lines. We may at first balk at the thought of the extra work that that entails, but just for a moment look on the bright side. Just think how much more satisfying it will be to uncover more details about our forebears than most other people can be bothered to do, or who will be skilled enough to succeed. Sure, we know that so many of the viewers of Who Do You Think You Are are interested in their roots, but how many of them can actually sit down and do the research that we can. Very few. Why is that? It's because they just don't have the time or they think that they don't have the skills. Some may have doubled and hit a brick wall and then just given up. But once you learn how to crack this area of family history research, tracing your line back into the past can massively increase 
the enjoyableness of your hobby. For me, there's the sheer excitement of the chase through historical records. Take it from me, trips to the county record offices, the National Archives and the Society of Genealogists is fun. There's the detective work that has to be done that finally provides the clue which reveals one more generation of my family. All of this can be so much more satisfying to achieve than just finding great-grandparents in the census collection online. Now, yes, I will agree that there are times when you'll hit a brick wall and nothing can be done to find that elusive character. But there are times that, with a little bit of extra skill, a person such as yourself could break through and track down an ancestor. That's why I've recorded Help Me Get Back Before 1837 in England and Wales. This is to aid you to learn by listening to my tutorial. I explain to you the genealogy websites you need to use the record offices and archives you can visit, and what you can hope to uncover about your forebears' lives. I want to share with you my personal experiences in tracing family history over the years, and also what I've learnt from other genealogists that I've exchanged information and techniques with. Such things as how to mine down for more detail, and how to get the most from the membership sites such as Ancestry, the genealogist.co.uk, the Origins Network, and so on. In this hobby, I found that some people love to share their know-how, while others feel the need to keep secrets. I've read countless editions of the various family history magazines, and I've gone through other people's courses to gather all the latest gen on what these professionals are teaching. What I notice was that these lessons were almost always offered in print. As I distilled all this knowledge into my own tutorial, I realised something. Some people would prefer to listen to a sort of radio program. Many of us are busy with other calls on our time, and so the best way to reach us may not be to offer information to us that has to be read. If we can pop an audio CD in the car CD player, and learn while on the move, or in the home while getting on with other tasks, then this could be a better way to learn some new techniques. Don't worry though if you'd like to read the transcript, as I'll offer it as a bonus PDF that you can print out and keep. This easy to understand and informative audio tutorial will play automatically on your computer or CD player whether it's in the house or in the car. This means that Fred Smith from down the road, or Jane Doe, living thousands and thousands of miles away from me on the other side of the world, will be able to listen to the information. No special technical ability needed, computer degree or professional expertise is necessary. I absolutely wanted to make 100% sure that all you needed was a standard computer or CD player in order to listen to this tutorial, and that you would not need to go to a special website or download some extra software to hear them. I wanted to ensure that all you'd have to do is load the disc in your CD tray and the disc would play automatically without any fuss. And that's what you get with my CD. But also I wanted to ensure that it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg to learn my family historian tips and techniques and that if you had any questions that I'd be there to support you. Again, I think I've got that covered as well. Perhaps a part of me wishes that I could tell you that my CD course is going to be complex and is hard work for you to complete as a PhD, if only to massage my own ego as the creator. No matter how hard that I try, however, there's no way that I can pretend that a person of average intelligence will not be able to understand my tutorial and to straight away be able to use the information to their own benefit. Use the information from this CD course for a month and try out the techniques. See for yourself that they work. If at any time during that one month you decide that it's not everything that I promised then simply send it back to me and I'll give you a prompt refund with no hassle. I don't have any weasel clauses to this guarantee. 
I won't ask you to explain why or ask you to jump through administrative hoops. Just send me the CD and a note asking for a refund and I'll promptly refund you the amount paid. Make the move today and join a growing band of family historians who are experiencing the thrill and joy of getting back before 1837. Look, there really is nothing to lose. To be honest with you, an enormous amount to gain. If you learn the way to get back in early records, you'll be a better genealogist and know where to look for your forebears. This tutorial will explain to you just how to go the extra mile simply and easily. Remember, this audio is as user-friendly as they come. Auto Start CD that works on computers and in domestic CD players or even in the car. A free transcript to print out and read and a really useful bonus CD. So what I'm asking you to do now is to go to the bottom of the page of this website, click on the button and make an investment in my new CD how to get back before 1837 in England and Wales. Remember, you're covered by my 100% cast iron guarantee. For one month, you can use the CD. If you don't like it, no questions asked, just return it to me and you'll get a full refund. I'm Nick Thorne, the Nosy Genealogist. Thank you very much for watching.